scanning for audio. Welcome once again to a Tin Dog Podcast. I've just recorded this podcast. I have. All the way through. I spent at least ten minutes enthusing about Standard 4. And then I checked the recording. And the battery had gone. Pauses to check recording. Comes back. Yes, it is recording. I can't possibly be as enthusiastic or as off the cuff as I just was. Which is a shame, because it was one of my all-time greatest. No, truly it was. This is Stranded Four. Now, here's the thing. Do you come to Doctor Who for the feels? Or do you come to Doctor Who for the not feels? Let me explain. When you were a kid, if you're of a certain age, you probably watched Doctor Who live on TV. And while it was on TV, nothing touched you. Nothing in the outside world could affect you. For those 25 minutes, the arguments, the not arguments, the big events in life, the pain, the suffering, everything that was going on or not going on, wouldn't come near you. You were safe. A lot of people in later life uh, use that as a place to mine. Uh, Say you have psychology and they tell you to find a safe place in your head some sort of meditation area. For a lot of people, it consists of the sound of the hum of the engine room of the TARDIS, that big white space with the console in it, and you know you can focus and you can become yourself. For those people, they're the ones travelling to this to not feel anything. They're the ones experiencing Doctor Who in order to distract them from the world. Which is why many Doctor Who fans in later life absolutely love the series and can't let it go. Because while they're watching it, while they're experiencing it, they are safe from everything. It's kind of a fallback position. Now, if this is for you, and you're not into Doctor Who for, say, the adventure or the emotions or any content like that, perhaps, I don't know, for sake of argument, you're a fan of the new series exclusively, then this story is more for you. Because in this story, it takes everything we know and love about Doctor Who and turns it not on its head, it extrapolates it so that it is just pure emotion. It gives you the feels. So if you're into Doctor Who for the not feels, well then stop listening at disc three of this four box set. But if you're in it for the feels, just keep going and prepare to sob your heart out because that's what you're going to get. You've got four superb stories with great performances across the board. But this does mark the end of the four-disc McGann box sets. After this, they're going to be doing something else. But we've really enjoyed those lovely slipcases and things on your shelves that all just give out gorgeousness. The move from four stories per box set to three box sets has been a bit... Well, not annoying, because let's face it, if I'm reviewing, I've got to get through four entire hours before I can record something rather than one. Here we go. We've got, well, we've got the background. You already know this is set four of the 16 stories that make up this box set. After crashing in 2020 London, the TARDIS crew has found the future of the universe altered and the human race doomed. As the Doctor tries desperately to unravel the paradox, all roads lead back to Baker Street and to the greatest test of all. That's the overriding synopsis, but episode one is crossed lines by Matt Fitton. The Doctor interrupts a pivotal journey for young Robin, while Tanya and Helen are caught up in events past and present. 
As the timeline dissolves and the void encroaches, the Doctor's friend asks the curator for help, but he's not the man he was. Oh, I forgot to mention this. On the box is Colin Baker. Colin Baker, playing the curator. Not Tom, but Colin. Now, we knew that he sort of pops in and uses some of his old faces. I'd be interested to know why it wasn't Tom, but I can live with the fact that it's Colin, because Colin always does a good performance, and this is the curator as played by Colin. This is not the Doctor. We must always remember that, because the performance is subtly different, and in fact so much calmer and just better. I love the idea that this is a curator, and it just works beautifully. It's time travel, it's got little timelines, it's timey and wimey at the same time, and it just works. Get Andy by Lisa McMullen is disc two. The Doctor resolves to make a difference and save one life in particular, but someone else is making a beeline for Sergeant Andy Davison. Mr Bird has something to prove and he will go to any extreme to do it. This is a great story. Because it deals with consequences, and that's what this box set is truly about, really. The consequences of actions and people trying to undo things and make things better. And that brings us to story number three, The Keys of Baker Street by Roy Gill. Oh, it's practically a stage play waiting to happen. It's dark, it's so visual. And it's by Roy Gill. Humming in on the root of the problem, the Doctor attempts a risky solution. And disaster strikes. Soon, 107 Baker Street is all that's left of reality and the residents climb the floors to face their destiny. I would like to use the words Pinteresque at this point and play my £5 card. Um, Basically, it is dark, it is very emotionally charged, and it helps us look into all of the characters. They're all worried about what will happen if they manage to save everyone, and they're also worried about if they'll even manage to save anyone. What will happen? Now, as I said, if you're in this for the feels, keep going. But if you're in this for the adventure, you can stop now. You can get off the bus. It's fine. You've done a brilliant trip. You've done 15 of the 16 stories, and you know what? You could always listen to story number 16 and then never listen to it again, because you will cry. You will be upset. And it is so well-structured. Because the main thing in your head at this point is, will, live, leave Tanya. It matters. It matters a lot. It matters to us all. We've been so emotionally involved in this storyline that we need this to happen and we need a proper solution. And trust me, we will get one. Punch the air moments, perhaps. Teary moments, perhaps. Do we get what we want? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. And I also don't know what you want. But what I do know is that this is depressing as hell because it takes place in our world, our version of 2020, the COVID-ridden pox world that we lived in for so long and just hated. It takes us back and not everyone's going to get out of this alive because that's what happened in the real world. You will be depressed, but you will be empowered and you will feel better. It's going to be an award-winning piece. The whole of the four box sets, but specifically this episode, the one that I probably will never listen to again because it gave me the feels. Hmm. Perhaps I'm the one with the psychological problems. And perhaps not. I'm going to play you the trailer now and let you decide for yourself, but as far as I'm concerned, it was wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me and letting me partake in this lovely trip. Because Stranded was just great. Thank you. So until next time, here's the trailer, and be seeing you. From Big Finish Productions, Doctor Who, The Eighth Doctor Adventures, Stranded 4. Andy, we we couldn't reach him in time. Everyone died. The whole human race. (sighs) No, that's what you went there to stop. Robin, he did this. I did this. I need to find him. Fix things. We need to get off the ship. It's about to crash into that space station. Now is not the time to nip to the loo. He's a curator. Helen saw him a few more times than me. 
He's a very strange man. If the doctor can't find a way to stop this... Come out! Come out! Wherever you are, ten seconds until impact. Everything will end. All creation will blink from existence. Dante wants to eat my soul. Yeah, but don't panic. Why aren't we panicking? Because they only hunt at the dark. Oh. It is dark! Big finish for the love of stories. You've reached the voicemail of the doctor. Sorry I can't take your call, but I'm probably out saving the universe. Please leave a message after the term. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance.